I want you to think of three very small things, perhaps a golf ball or a dime or even a speck of dust. Now consider that something even smaller than these three objects could play a major role in the future of cancer treatment. Hello, my name is Stephen Kaysen. I'm a mechanical engineering major, and my presentation is on nanorobots and the fight against cancer. Now, nanorobots are a small device constructed of molecular materials ranging from about 1 to 100 nanometers. Tr to truly grasp how small a nanometer is, here's a video courtesy of World Science Festival. So here we have a strand of human hair, which is about the tenth of a meter. If we were to compare this strand of hair to the height of the Empire State Building, it'd be about 150 stories tall. Using the same scale, if you were to compare this to a human red blood cell, it would be about 10 stories tall. A bacteria cell would be about three stories tall, and a protein molecule would be about one and a half feet tall. Finally, a nanometer would be a little less than a quarter of an inch. This is about 100,000 times smaller than, the, than the, the diameter of a human hair. Now the origins of nanote nanotechnology begin, begin with three main people. The first person being physicist Richard Feynman from the California Institute of Technology. And in 1959, he gave the first lecture on nanotechnology and engineering at the atomic level. The two other people are named Gerd Benig and Heinrich Rohrer. In 1981, they invented the scanning tunneling microscope, which allowed you to see individual atoms for the first time and helped spark the research of nanotechnology. Now, before we get to the nanorobots, it's important to know how tumors work. There are two main types of tumors, benign and malignant. Benign tumors are not cancerous, don't cause immediate harm to the body, and can't spread to other parts of the body. They just keep growing bigger and bigger within the body. Now, malignant tumors are cancerous, they cause immediate harm to the body, and they spread to other parts of the body, and continue to grow just as benign tumors do. Now, here's a video courtesy of Cancer Research UK that shows how tumors form. They are made whenever a healthy cell in the body divides and grows at an excessive rate. Once they reach about the size of a grain of salt, they can't live without oxygen and nutrients. So to survive, they send out chemical signals to the blood vessels to encourage them to grow out to the tumor, essentially feeding them. And this allows them to grow exponentially. And if it's a malignant tumor like this one, it will send out the cancer cells through the blood vessel and spread to other parts of the body. Now within the past decade, advancing nanomedicine has been difficult for scientists because their main research was focused on designing, building, and programming nanobots to actively seek and destroy individual cells within the tumor, while also trying to stay away from the healthy cells. Now until recently, Scientists from Arizona State University collaborated with researchers from the National Center for Nanoscience and Technology, or NCNST, and found a way to program the nanorobots that once they're injected into the bloodstream, they'll go directly to the side of the tumor and cause a blood clot within the vessel, cutting off the tumor's blood supply and ultimately leading to its death. Now, the most important question is whether this design works in the real world. Now, Arizona State University and NCNST have done experiments on mice and Bama miniature pigs. They did this by first injecting them with human cancer cells. They let it grow and finally injected the nanorobots to go inside and fight off the cancer. First off, the experiment showed that the nanorobots were safe and effective in shrinking the tumor, kept it from spreading, and didn't harm any of the healthy cells. There is also no evidence of unwanted side effects such as the nanorobots spread spreading to the brain and causing a stroke. Along with that, the nanorobots were very fast working. Once injected into the bloodstream, they blocked the tumor's blood supply and killed the tissue within 24 hours. They were also cleared and degraded from the body within 24 hours of the tumor dying. The only problem scientists, scientists found is timing when to activate the nanorobot and making sure it's inside of the tumor's blood cell and not in the main bloodstream. Now, there are three main types of cancer therapy, surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation. 
In surgery, surgeons manually remove either all or some of the t tumor and is usually paired with chemotherapy and radiation. While it can be helpful, they, there can be very long recovery times due to the big incisions or the cuts from the surgery can be, become infected. Chemotherapy uses drugs to kill cancer cells within the body, and this has many terrible side effects and destroys tons of healthy cells along with the cancer cells. With, can with radiation therapy, it uses high doses of radiation to kill the cancer cells and shrink the tumors. And along with chemotherapy, it has many terrible side effects and destroys healthy cells along with the cancer cells. Now, nanobots are a better form of treatment than these three because they have minimal side effects, they're less invasive, and were found to be more effective and safe than the other treatments. This information is courtesy of cancerresearchuk.org. Well, now, while it's important to research the topic, none of this can be done without money. One of the main funders of nanotechnology is National Net Nanotechnology Initiative, or NNI. They are a government research and development initiative that donates funds for nanotechnology research to 25 different departments and independent agencies. They give about $1.2 to $1.8 billion per year. This is courtesy of nano.gov and phys.org. Now, the main question many people want to know is how much will it cost? This, since it's not in the market yet, there's no definite price point, but by looking at the high quality materials and precision needed to produce them, it won't be cheap. But hopefully once technology advances and they become easier to produce, they will become affordable and will be the preferred cancer treatment across the globe. Now, we need to look towards the future of nanorobots. The discovery of the thrombin de delivery DNA robot was a huge leap forward in using DNA nanotechnology for cancer therapy. And since the nanobot structure is very malleable and can carry a wide variety of materials in a nearly infinite number of combinations, it will hopefully be seen as an option for cancer treatment within the next 5 to 10 years, and hopefully leading to the ultimate eradication of all tumors. Again, my name is Stephen Kaysen, and this has been my presentation on nanorobots and the fight against cancer.